Hi everyone, it's Flannery. We just met one another in our morning Zoom meeting where we did activity one of our text comparison lesson using Washington Crossing the Delaware. I'm gonna walk you through activity two of this lesson and get you started on your morning assignment. As you can see, I'm starting with the big picture, and I know we just talked about this in our meeting, but I wanted to just show you again um, how important it is to use this tool. It's probably my favorite thing. Uh, we can see we're in week one, and two days have been set aside for us to teach this lesson. And usually that works out with analyzing the painting on day one and then analyzing the poem on day two. But just to show you how clearly this big picture puts everything together, um, we'll just look at the first couple of weeks. They start with a little bit of analysis in the text comparison activity, and then they're going to do the general history of Virginia lesson. We don't have time to do that in our training, but that's a really important lesson because it teaches them annotation. And then in week two, they're gonna move into a rhetorical analysis activity with Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. That'll be our lesson this afternoon. And in that lesson, they are putting together all of those skills, um, the, the annotation as well as the analysis uh, to analyze a much more complex text. So these lessons are cumulative and they build on one another, and it's really important to look at how all of them fit together in this big picture. And it underscores the importance of teaching through every single lesson so that the students have those skills that they need to move forward through the nine weeks and through the school year. So after I look at the big picture, I like to zoom in a little bit and go to the curriculum guide. Curriculum guide is set up with um, notes, for each week. So we see our week one overview here, and then the suggested activities, the skills that are addressed, and the notes over here in this column can be really helpful, especially in giving you suggestions for how to divide up your class time, especially during those class periods where you might work on two lessons. And then finally, we move into the lesson itself. Now, I have this open for you in Kami. If you have not used Kami, it's just an extension for Google Chrome that allows you to highlight and annotate the text. And we're not going to be using that. Or I'm not going to ask you to use that during our training, but it's a great classroom tool that you can try for free if you think it might be useful. I have activity two pulled up here, and this is just in the um, in the the text comparison lesson. We already looked at everything for activity one, but those same teacher notes are here for activity two as well to kind of guide you through how to teach the poem analysis. Now I'm just going to move straight to the poem now. Here we are. Must have accidentally highlighted that. Get rid of that. Okay. So this is an ekphrastic poem. And I've gone ahead and written that in for you because most of the time my students have no idea what this question is aiming for. And, um, and most of them have never seen this term before. So we do have to spend a little bit of time discussing what an ekphrastic poem is. And that is a poem that describes something else in vivid detail. Usually that something else is going to be a work of art. Um, and we want to just give them a minute to read the poem first. Always a good idea to give them just a few minutes to read it silently and kind of process it and gather some meaning from it before we ask them to read aloud. For this poem, the strategy we recommend is to have them form a circle and let each student kind of take turns reading a line of the poem from punctuation to punctuation because that helps them to learn how to read a poem. And when they get better at reading poems, they get better at determining their meaning. So it's a good activity. It gets them up and moving and helps them to learn that skill. 
we can work through these first two questions together as a whole group. And then you move into another one of these mood bubble charts. They've already completed this exact chart as they analyze the painting. So at this point, you might want to let them work together in small groups to complete the chart, but this time for the poem only. They're not looking at the painting at all. This chart is just for the poem. And after they've had some time to complete the chart, you'll want to discuss again. Um, there's even a chance for a little bit of annotation here. You might have them go through the poem and highlight details that appear in both. So maybe they can highlight the things that appear in the poem that they also saw in the painting. Then you might ask them to point out some details that were present in the painting, but that they don't see in the poem. And then switch it around and ask them about details that are in the poem that they don't see depicted in the painting. That's going to help them achieve that analysis that they need to start comparing the themes of the two works. And so when we move down to the last part of this lesson, they're going to go back to their theme statement from the painting, and they've got to decide if that same theme statement applies to the poem. And then they're asked to create a thematic statement for the poem and justify it by using three or more details from the poem. So already we're kind of lining up um, the use of that textual evidence that's so very important as they start writing about literature. And then finally, there is a writing assignment at the very end where they, um, they put their comparison into paragraph form. And so um, this is so early in the school year that it might be most effective to do this together as a class and kind of model for them how to think through and plan that paragraph and write it. Or you might let them do it as a draft individually or have them work with a partner or in a small group. So this is your morning lesson. I'm going to let you go ahead and start working through it now. And we're going to discuss it together in our Zoom meeting that we have after lunch. Um, if you're not able to attend that meeting, we do plan to record it so that you can come back maybe and visit that discussion later on if you're not able to attend with us. But we hope to see you there and good luck.